Good morning, my Molly May. How are you feeling today? Mummy said you went to the doctors because you weren't very well. Are you feeling better today? I hope so. And you've got some special medicine to make you feel much better. Remember to drink lots, take your medicine, and Mummy will give you Mummy and Daddy will give you big hugs so you'll feel much, much better. Okay. But I have a story for you from Australia. This is by Mem Fox. It's called Koala Lou. It's Mummy Koala and that's Lou, the baby. That's what your mummy's been doing for you, giving you some cuddles when you're not feeling very well. Look, there's Lou. She's got a bright face, hasn't she? There once was a baby koala, so soft and round that all who saw her loved her. Her name was Koala Lou. That's what koalas eat. Gum leaves. Oh, there's a caterpillar. He's eating the leaf too. The emu. Oh, look at the emu. I'll show you those in a minute. The emu loved her. The platypus loved her. And even tough little koala claws next door loved her. There's the emu. That's a spotted quoll and a rosella, a little possum. Mm, I can't see what that is, maybe a possum baby. There's another little possum and a gecko, a magpie. What are they? Oh, they're like little bush animals. There's another koala and there's a big eyed possum. They have big eyes because they come out at night. They have big eyes so they can see and they sleep all day. But it was her mother who loved her most of all. A hundred times a day, she would laugh and shake her head and say, Koala Lou, I do love you. Look, is that what your mummy does as well? Koala Lou, I do love you. Ha <laughs> ha. Whenever she stretched in the early morning sun or climbed a gum tree or bravely went down the track all by herself, her mother would smile and say, Koala Lou, I do love you. Oh, this is a big stretch. There she is, going walking down. They're flannel flowers. They're Nanny Deb's favourite flower. The years passed and other koalas were born. Brothers and sisters for Koala Lou. Soon her mother was so busy she didn't have time to tell Koala Lou that she loved her. But of course she did. Oh, I think mummy koala's busy. Ah, look at this one. Whoop. Sneaky eating gum leaves. There's another baby. Oh, there's poor Koala Lou. But mummy still loves her. She's just a bit busy. Every night she curled up under the stars. Koala Lou thought about the times when her mother had looked at her and said, Koala Lou, I do love you. And she longed for her to say it again. One night, Koala Lou had a splendid idea. Preparations had begun for the Bush Olympics. Wow! That's big races for all the bush animals. She would compete in the gum tree climbing event and she would win and her mother would fling her arms around her neck and say again, Koala Lou, I do love you. Sounds like a good plan. Look at her, snuggled up in her tyre. What's that? What is it? It goes, it's a frog. It's a gecko. They look funny, don't they? And an owl. They also come out at night. Koala Lou began training right away. She jogged and puffed and lifted weights and panted, just like Mummy and Daddy. 
She hung from the branch with one claw at a time till she ached. She did push-ups till her tummy hurt. And last of all, she climbed the tallest tree that she could find over and over again. Gosh, is that what mummy and daddy do? <sighs> They're doing push-ups and running, hanging. Good, and she's got it. Her laces aren't undone. And there's the Bush Olympics ready. That's a numbat. He's got a long nose. All the animals are there, ready for their races. Sometimes her mother would watch her and ask, and ask How are you going, Blossom? Just fine. Fine, thank you, Koala Lou replied. <laughs> oh, there's Koala Lou up in the tree. She's saying, How are you going? She's got. <laughs> Got her hands full, Mummy Koala, with all the other baby koalas. At last, the day of the Bush Olympics oh. arrived. <gasps> there they are. There's the numbat. He's carrying a torch, ready to light the fire. There's all the animals in their hats and sunglasses. There's a wombat and a kangaroo. Oh, that looks like a bilby. There's the gecko. It's a goanna. There's the emu. They're all ready to watch. Koala Claws also entered the gum tree climbing event and everyone knew how fast she was. And Koala Lou wasn't scared. She saw her mother in the crowd and imagined her saying, Koala Lou, I do love you. Her heart filled with hope. There they are. She's looking at her mummy. Yes, I can do it, mummy. There's the other one ready to race. That's a big, tall tree, isn't it? It's a magpie in his nest. <gasps> There's mummy koala watching, getting ready. It was koala claws who went first. Her climb, can you hear that? That's the timer on the steamer. We're cooking some rice for Blair. Hey, it was Koala Claus who went first. Her climb was a record-breaking 22 metres in 70 seconds flat. The spectators whistled and cheered and wildly waved their holiday hats. I wonder if po Poppy Edgar, can you do a big whistle for us? Poppy Edgar's not Poppy Edgar. My gosh, where's that? That's your, your mummy's granddad. It's Poppy Brett, but he's not here. He must be outside. We'll get him to do a whistle when he comes back. Here they are. Hooray! Cheering. Their hats are flying in the air. There's Koala Claws at the top. <laughs> Whistling and cheering. Can I do better than that? Thought Koala Lou. I must. As she stepped towards the crowd. Oh, as she stepped towards the tree. A hush Shh, fell over the crowd. Get set on your mark, said Kookaburra. Go! <gasps> there they are. They're, oh, some little Banksias. There's Koala Lou down the body. She's thinking, oh, can I do it? It's a big, tall tree. But go! Off she goes. Koala Lou leapt onto the tree, up and up and up she climbed, higher and higher and higher, faster and faster and faster until there she was, right at the very top. The spectators roared and clapped and stamped their feet. Hooray! Hey, Poppy Brett's not back yet to give us a whistle. There she is, up the very top of the koala, the top of the tree. <laughs> Poppy Brett, he gave us a <laughs> he gave us a whistle. <laughs> That's what the crowds were doing, cheering for Koala Lou. <laughs> Can you do that? <laughs> Nanny Deb can't whistle. <laughs> Still going, but she wasn't fast enough. In spite of all her training, all her hoping, it was Koala Claus who won the gum tree climbing. Koala Lou came second. 
Koala Lu went off and hid. She heard the shouts of the Bush Olympics and cried her heart out. They're all shouting their hats. There's poor Koala Lu. She's hiding in the bush. She's sad because she didn't win. But that's okay. When the first stars of evening appeared in the sky, Koala Lu crept home through the dark and up into the gum tree. Her mother was waiting for her. Before she could say a word, her mother had flung her arms around her neck and said, Koala Lu, I do love you. And I always have and I always will. And she hugged her for a very long time. Oh, poor Koala Lu. There's the kookaburra. There's the night sky. It doesn't matter if you come first or second or third. What matters is you give it a go and you do your best. Try your hardest. Everybody has their talents in lots of different areas. We're all good in some things, as long as you give it a crack. Well, I hope you're feeling much better today, Marley, when you get up. And here comes Poppy Brett. He's going to come and say hello. He's running as fast as he can, just like Koala Lu. Running, running, running. <laughs> Which isn't there very is. fast. <laughs> hello, Marley. I heard you haven't been very well. I hope you're feeling a lot better soon. And this should cheer you up. A little bit of story from Nanny Deb. <laughs> Bye. Okay, Marley. Nanny Deb kids, two fingers, remember? Love you very much, and I hope you're feeling better soon. Okay, bye-bye.